Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Envision IT webinar on running effective projects in Office 365. A uh, quick intro. My name is Peter Carson. I'm going to be presenting for about an hour today here. I'm a SharePoint MVP as well as a Microsoft Canada partner seller. My contact information is here in the deck, which we will be posting up on our website after the uh, webinar, as well as a recording of the session as well. So if you've got colleagues that weren't able to attend or you want to go back to, to look at anything through there, by all means, go have a look at www.emissionit.com. Under the events section, you'll find all those details there. Quick agenda before we dive into things in terms of what we're going to go over this afternoon. We're going to start with a brief overview of Envision IT. For those of you who haven't attended a webinar before, who are we? Um, what sort of work do we do? And then we'll go into a bit of a background on project management. Just level set a little bit in terms of some of the things you should think about from a project management point of view. Also do a quick overview on Office 365. We're going to spend most of the time, though, in our various different scenarios and demos from there. So we're not going to PowerPoint you to death through the whole session. Uh, we are going to dive into to, to live demos in Office 365 and take you through that as well. We'll wrap it up from there with some next steps and uh, open up for questions as well through there. Now, if you have questions through the session itself, please uh, don't be afraid to ask them. The, uh, the questions window is, is open. We have moderators watching and responding to that, and I'll try and take the opportunities we're going through as well to respond to those questions. So I'll start with a quick overview on Envision IT, just a couple of slides here. Uh, we are Office 65 productivity consultants, so we've kind of rebranded ourselves. We've been known as a SharePoint boutique shop for quite some time now, been working with SharePoint for about 14 years now, but realizing as people are moving to the cloud, productivity and, uh, and collaboration means more than just SharePoint. There's a whole suite of tools that we're going to talk about here today. Um, so traditionally, we've been more focused on SharePoint websites, intranets and extranets, collaboration portals. Uh, we are a Microsoft Gold partner, and we're multiple award winner both from Microsoft and other industry associations. Um, beyond those those four main areas that we focus on, we have a number of services as well. If you go up into our Envision IT site, you can find out more about things like our uh, health checks and upgrade assessments from an on-premises point of view, our Office 65 and Azure cloud services and other features that we've got there. So enough about Envision IT, let's dive right into the topic for today, which is around project management in Office 365. So I wanted to start with just a little background first from a project management point of view. When, when people think about uh, projects and, and successful measures of those, what comes to mind? And, and one of the first things that we often hear, we get asked this ourselves all the time as a, a systems integrator delivers projects to our clients, you know, are you on time and on budget? And, and that's a tough one. We'll talk about some of the constraints for managing a project, changes in scope and such through there, uh, but obviously a very important thing for organizations looking to, to measure the success on their projects. Return on investment, obviously, you know, what was the uh, the investment both from an external party point of view, if you're engaging external partners like ourselves on projects, or an internal staffing point of view, an internal cost point of view. How does that roll up and what sort of return are you expecting from that and how do you measure that? How did your project align with your strategic goals and your objectives as an organization? What sort of quality are you expecting coming out of that? What sort of business value are you expecting to see from that? So there's lots of other ways to measure your projects, uh, but that was just some of the key ones that I wanted to bring up as we're going through things here. And I, I took a little time as I was preparing for the webinars, just kind of surfing around, looking at different um, publications, things that people have published around uh, highly successful project management, things to look out for. So this is one that I just picked um, almost at random through there. I've provided the link in there in terms of 10 rules of highly successful project management. A number of different items in here in terms of agility, not micromanaging, uh, keep improving your practice. And I'm hoping that today is part of that in terms of understanding how to, to better manage your projects from a portal and in a 365 point of view, uh, the sense of urgency. But communication is something that we're going to talk about a lot here. It's number six and it's number nine. And it really comes across all these different points as well, which is how do you bring the team together? How do you keep everybody on the same page and make sure that everybody's working from the same well, same single page? There isn't different versions of the truth within your organization. 
you know, if we look at what we're trying to achieve as project managers, you know, the, the classic project management triangle that you see in, in most project management training, the, the relationship between scope, time, and cost. You know, we, we talked about some of the measures and the common one from business saying, you know, was it on time and was it on budget? You know, if you're going to constrain those two elements of the triangle, uh, you've got to live with the scope that comes out from that. And that's not always necessarily well understood. Certainly up in the business, they've got a very clear idea of what scope they want. They may have a preset idea of when they need to have it and a cost that they're willing to absorb for that. And the reality is that you really need to optimize uh, across those. You can't simply choose all three elements and have a successful project coming out of that. And quality becomes an overarching in there as well. You know, as you squeeze across those, um, does quality suffer as part of that? You can deliver a, a project faster. It may cost you more money. It may result in a reduction of scope. So there is those interrelations within there. If we look at different methodologies for project management, I mean, the two that we see being in the IT industry are really around waterfall and agile. And a lot of these apply outside of the technology space as well. You know, are we talking about more of a traditional waterfall where we do deep requirements gathering, go through the design work, then do our implementation, our QA processes, and go into to maintenance mode and, and ongoing sustainment on a project? And it's a very linear path through that versus a waterfall where we don't go uh, nearly as deep from a requirements and a design point of view up front in the project, that actually becomes part of the activities through the project itself. So we're maintaining a, a product backlog of requirements, uh, but we're really biting off a, a manageable chunk of that that we can achieve in a two to four week window into a sprint backlog and working through that. Uh, daily scrums, communications, transparency are all very important from an agile point of view. And again, you know, this could be a technology project, could be lean manufacturing that we're talking about from a manufacturing point of view, same ideas apply there. Um, and, and really it doesn't have to be an either or, we often see a hybrid between both of those. In fact, many of our technology projects start as waterfall projects where we're doing some requirements gathering, we're doing some creative designs, look and feel, things like that, um, and then we're moving into agile mode from there to actually deliver the project. So we see advantages to working across both of those as well. But regardless of which of those methodologies or other methodologies that you choose, as I mentioned before, communications is key. I mean, this uh, cartoon is somewhat amusing. It's one that we've used for uh, for many years now as we're explaining agile versus waterfall and, and the breakdowns in communications that can happen in a, in a very rigid waterfall type of approach where how the customer explains something and it gets understood, designed and developed and described are very different as you talk to different people within that organization. And, and ultimately, what gets delivered is not what the client was looking for, and what they thought they wanted wasn't actually what they needed either. So providing effective communications all the way through the project, from inception through to the main development part of a project, and into sustainment and ongoing uh, maintenance of a project, is key, both to the team itself and to the stakeholders um, up and out as well. Whether those are internal stakeholders from an executive point of view within your organization, or they're the customer stakeholders external to your organization. So really what we're going to be talking about is how do we communicate effectively from a project point of view and how do we leverage the full Office 365 stack in order to do that. So if we think about communication methods, I mean, we've got traditional methods that have been used for, for decades, uh, maybe a little less for some of those like emails, but, you know, having face-to-face -face in-person meetings, having phone calls, uh, communicating over email has become prevalent. Most people, in fact, are overwhelmed by their email. There's so much uh, coming through there, it becomes just too much to deal with. And traditional documents, whether those are Word, Excel, PowerPoints, um, other tools that you're using to create those documents related to the projects. Uh, Microsoft Project from a project plan point of view, third-party tools, etc. But over the last number of years, we've seen a number of newer communication methods come up as part of that. You know, in-person meetings are more and more becoming virtual meetings, much like we're having here today. You know, we're not physically gathering everybody together into one place. We're actually doing that virtually. And things like desktop sharing that I'm doing right now are a very powerful way uh, to do that. Instant messaging, again, as, as opposed to email, the idea of presence, understanding when somebody's available, being able to pick up the phone or do an instant message with them and get that quick back and forth uh, communication happening that doesn't necessarily happen from an email point of view. It's more of a one-on-one point-to-point 
and that often morphs into other forms as well. I, I am one of my uh, staff members on a project that we're working on. We get back and forth. We pick up the phone. We start chatting about it. Uh, we then do a desktop sharing through uh, Skype for Business so we can effectively have a virtual meeting there. And, and the meeting actually evolves through the, the life of the meeting itself. But even other things like enterprise social, you know, how do we uh, communicate as an organization outside of email? Is there other tools like Yammer that we're going to talk about to provide great tools for doing that social type of communications within the enterprise? Um, portals themselves, obviously, is something we're going to be focusing on here today. How do we build a place to bring all this together and have that single version of the truth that we don't have documents attached to emails and maybe people don't have access to the right versions of those? We've got a common place, a single version of the truth where everybody can go to to provide that information. So that's a little background uh, just as we lead into things. Next, what I want to do is uh, take a minute and do an overview of Office 365. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, uh, the suite of tools that are there. And, and 365 is something that's changing all the time. Um, if you're not keeping current on what's coming out from Microsoft, they're releasing new features fast and furious uh, from that point of view. But before I do that, I want to do a quick poll out to the attendees and just get an understanding of what versions of SharePoint are you currently using. Are you already in Office 365? Are you in an on-premise? Or maybe you're not using SharePoint at all uh, through there. So let me just open that poll up for everybody and launch that out. So I'm going to keep that open for a minute, give people a chance, and you can respond to more than one. You may have part of your business in the cloud, part of it on-premise, uh, still evaluating, uh, looking at hybrid solutions, etc. through there. All right. I'll give another uh, 15, 20 seconds, let everybody get a chance to vote through there. And what I'll do is I'll share the results back out just so everybody can see what's the uh, the audience spectrum as a whole through there. All right, so let me just close that and I'm going to share that back out. Uh, so actually about 60% on Office 365. So obviously the, the title and the topic resonated well with the audience. A lot of people are using Office 365 and we'll talk in a minute what that means. It doesn't mean just SharePoint. There's a whole suite of tools that are part of that. Um, good chunk still on both SharePoint Server 2013 and 2010. A few still on foundation and older versions from there. And and no harm in looking at Office 365 if you're still on Moss 2007. We've We've done migrations and we've got ongoing ones going right now where we're taking people right from Moss 2007 or 2010 right into the cloud in Office 365. So let me just hide that and we're going to do a quick overview of the, the 365 suite. Now I did a, a full hour long webinar back in the spring on this topic, talked about each of the tools within 365 as well as the licensing details and how all that works. Uh, so I encourage you to go to, to the past event there back in June if you want to get a, a deeper, broader inner overview there. I don't want to spend too much time on this side, but I did want to level set and make sure everybody understands what 365 is. You know, it is a suite of both desktop, mobile, and browser-based productivity tools. And it is multi-platform. Microsoft's done a, an awesome job. In fact, you were watching the Apple uh, keynotes yesterday. You would have seen them referencing Microsoft as a productivity partner for Apple. That's a very new thing. You know, Microsoft and, and Apple have been fierce foes for many years. Um, we've seen a real shift within Microsoft, adopting iOS, adopting Android, bringing out the whole Office suite across all those different platforms, major browsers as well no longer locked into Internet Explorer, uh, fully supporting Chrome, Firefox, Safari as well from that point of view. So very much a uh, heterogeneous suite of tools that can be used across a wide variety of devices. Now, where do people think, uh, typically start with Office 365? And traditionally, it's been with Exchange Online. You know, if you're still running Exchange ser servers on-premise, you know, there's a pretty compelling argument to, to moving those out into online, just from a cost point of view and from a staffing and management point of view. Microsoft basically hosts your email for you, uh, which includes not just your email, but your calendars and your contacts. You can access it through your web, through your Outlook, as well as on your mobile devices. You get a 50-gig mailbox, so you've got lots of room there from that point of view. 
uh, Skype for Business, this is something that a lot of organizations are, are starting to become aware of, still not um, hugely adopted across all of our clients though, and it's really low hanging fruit. This is what we use internally here at Envision IT from an instant messaging and a presence point of view. So I can quickly see who's green, who's yellow, who's red with my staff, find out who's available, I'll be able to connect up and collaborate and communicate very quickly with, with those people, whether they're here in the office, working from home, working at client site, it doesn't really matter where you are. We can establish audio and video calls through that. We can do online meetings, screen sharing, all as part of that. So a great tool as part of the Office 365 stack. Uh, Yammer. Yammer is something that I'm very keen on. It's something we're not going to go too deep in today from a, an enterprise social within projects point of view. We debated back and forth on that. I'll explain some of that logic a little later in the session. But it's basically um, your social network for your enterprise. It's not Facebook. It's really about uh, driving team collaboration and, and engaging employees. So if you're not uh, currently looking at that, if you're afraid of it when you see that social network uh, phrase attached to that, don't be afraid. It's a very powerful tool. It's a great way to build knowledge within your organization and share it not only with current staff but with future staff. It becomes a record of that knowledge for your organization. Then we have OneDrive for Business. This is basically a, a file store where you can drop your files that basically you're working on yourself. You can share it with your colleagues, but as you get into to deeper sharing, OneDrive really isn't the place for that. SharePoint is the place to, to keep that and we'll show that and, and talk about that in a minute as well. Uh, SharePoint Online, um, obviously a place to, to communicate and collaborate. It can be your corporate intranet. We can create team sites, and that's really where we're going to focus in from a project's point of view. And we can do forms and workflows, which we'll also touch on as, as part of the session here today. Some of the other things that we're not going to go too deep on here today, uh, Power BI, the ability to, to connect up data. So think about your project management data. Maybe you have back-end ERP systems, financial systems, time tracking that you want to draw data from and provide analytics on your projects. Power BI is a great way to expose that information. Uh, Delve, also a great way to discover knowledge and information. So it's all about um, facilitating information discovery, both of people and what those people are working on. It actually uses machine intelligence, builds profile pages, collects signals of how people are collaborating together, and starts to understand based on who you are and what you're looking to do and who you're looking to connect with, what's the relevant knowledge being created through those connections and surfaces that up to you. Office groups. We're going to touch on those. We're actually going to leverage some of the features here. Uh, this is really the idea of combining both Exchange and SharePoint together. So you get a group calendar and a mailbox from the Exchange side because people love to to still use email from a collaboration point of view. Having a shared calendar, while you can do that in SharePoint, it actually works better in Exchange. It's more integrated with Outlook, can be invited to appointments, uh, viewed easily from that point of view. But SharePoint is still a great place to do document collaboration. So leverage that from providing a library for that. It's all wrapped up technically as a, an Azure AD object under the hood. So that's the elements of Office Groups. And again, we're going to dive deeper into that. Office 365 videos, you can create channels, you can easily drag and drop videos up into those channels. And basically what happens in the cloud is, is Microsoft with their Azure Media Services, which is the same service they use to, to deliver things like uh, NFL and the, the Olympic streaming and such, massive, massive scale, can take your videos and securely encode them and make them available as part of your, your portal. So it's something you could think about leveraging from your project sites as well. Uh, OneNote. OneNote's not, uh, well, it is, I suppose, an online tool, but it, I think of it primarily as a, an electronic notebook that I install on my devices. And it's really a notebook on steroids. It's awesome. I use it a lot. I'm a big fan of it. Notebooks can be personal or shared. So you can actually create a OneNote notebook for your project. And that actually comes by default as part of the project site. So we'll have a look at what that looks like. Um, you can actually use it right through the browser, or you can install it not only on your PC or your Mac, but your iOS devices, your Android devices. And by keeping that in the cloud, it actually gets synced across all those different environments. So whether I'm on my desktop right now, I'm on my Surface Pro when I'm out in the field, I'm an iPhone user, I have the same OneNote across all of that. It's just an awesome way to keep all those notes together. Okay, so that's some background on project management and then on Office 365. Let's dive into the meat of the session. This is where we're going to spend the, the bulk of the time this afternoon here. And we're going to take you through sort of an evolution in, in our mind of what we've done from a project management point of view and the tools that we've put together from that. 
So let's start at the beginning um, with team sites. And this is actually the genesis for SharePoint itself. Way back in 2001, when it was SharePoint Portal Server 2001 or SharePoint Team Services, it was all about building team sites. It wasn't about publishing internets or public facing websites. We didn't have nearly the features that we've got today in the product, but fundamentally it still had a document library where we can store documents, have version history and such around that. Now in, in the current template, either in SharePoint 2013 or in Office 365, what we have out of the box is a document library, a news feed, a OneNote notebook, and a wiki library. Now we can certainly extend that. We can add additional lists and libraries to that, but it is very SharePoint centric. It doesn't include any exchange features, Yammer, or anything else. It's just within uh, SharePoint itself. So what I'd like to do now is actually go through the process of creating a new SharePoint team site. So I've got our development tenant up here in 365 that we're gonna be using for our demos. And what I wanna do here, I'm in the, the top level SharePoint site. Let me come down into site contents. And we'll see we've got a number of subsites already created in this site. And we'll go into those in a minute as we go through the demo. But I wanna go ahead and create a new subsite. We'll just call this a, a demo team site. And we'll give it a similar URL. And you can see there's a number of templates that I can choose to, to create my site in SharePoint. I'm gonna use the out of the box team site right now. Later we'll talk about some of the custom templates that we've actually created for project sites and client sites. And there's a number of other templates through here as well. But let's go ahead and do that. We'll create our team site. Um, we're going to inherit the permissions. We're not going to go too deep into permissions and governance today. Uh, we're actually doing a, a follow-on webinar next week <coughs> where we're going to talk more about governance, permissions, even external sharing, and how you share uh, your SharePoint sites outside of your organization. We'll see yes on the, the nav bar, and we'll go ahead and create that. So it takes a second. It uh, has amusing messages here, and there we've got our demo team site up and created there. So if I go into my site contents here for a minute, we can see there's a number of libraries that are created out of the box. The important one for me as somebody collaborating and working within this team site is typically this documents library here. I don't have any documents loaded up in there right now. It's actually very easy. I can literally drag and drop files right into that document library. Let me actually get another window open here. And I'm gonna grab a couple of uh, documents. Let me grab my temp folder here. I'll grab a document template and you can see right in the browser there, I can just drop that on. I've dropped a single file, I could drop multiple files in through there and work with that document now within SharePoint. And this is the idea of a single version of the truth that is so key to SharePoint. As I collaborate with people and work with people on this document, we're not gonna start creating V1, V2, V3 files, final, final, draft, etc. We're always gonna work against that one document. So if we look at the library, in the library settings for a second here, we've got this idea of versioning. It's a very powerful feature in SharePoint. By default in a team site, it's set up to create major versions. What that means is every time somebody edits that document, it's gonna create a new version to that document. And I can check the document out to say nobody else can work on it until I finished up with it. I can check it back in, somebody else can edit that document, but I can then see all that version history. In fact, by default, it's gonna keep 500 versions of those. That's gonna consume a fair number of space. If this is a large document, you may not want to keep that many versions. You can actually trim that back and say, you know what, I only need to keep the, the last three versions or the last 10 versions through there. Okay, so let's actually come back to the, the document library now. We've got our document in there, and let's say I wanna edit that. So I can do a number of things. I can actually edit it right in the browser itself. So if I click on the ellipsis here, just taking a second to, to wind up. I actually see a, um, a preview of the document there. Uh, just to comment back to make the, the fonts a little bigger. So let me go ahead and go do that. Um, I am in Chrome right now. I've forgotten how to do that. Zoom, there we go. Okay, that should be easier for people to see. We may have to scale down later when we get into the demo side of things. Um, sorry, where was I? I was actually going into the edit side here. 
So I can actually launch this out into Office, edit that document, save it back into to SharePoint and see that version history there. So I get that, oops, get that ability to track those versions through there. And I can actually see off of the details on here, the full version history, the properties of the document and such from there. I can also extend the document library and add what's called metadata into here. So I can actually go into the library settings again and say, okay, I actually want to add additional columns of information. And we'll show you more detail a little bit later how we use that. You can actually tag documents, use that from a search point of view, from a view point of view. It becomes a very powerful concept within SharePoint. Traditionally, if you've come from a, a file share world of, of collaborating and sharing your documents, typically you end up with a, a deep hierarchy of folders within your file shares. In SharePoint, it's actually more powerful to, to leverage metadata and use that to categorize and organize your documents through there. Now let's come back to the home page on the site itself and look at some of the other things that we've got in here. So we can see there's our document there. We've actually got some uh, some hints and tips just to get started with my team site. I can remove that if I understand what I'm doing. I don't want to have that showing up in there. And some of the other features that we've got in the team site is the notebook itself. So I can actually click on notebook and we can see each team site actually has a OneNote notebook created as part of that. So I can create pages in here, add content in, and I could sync this OneNote to my um, local devices, whether that's my PC, even my phone, carry that around and have that available to me offline. Now, one of the, the real benefits of the OneNotes is I can share these with other people. We can actually collaborate together on that. I can have multiple people editing, working in the same OneNote at the same time. I actually see those changes live showing up as people are working in there. And the same is true of the, the rest of the Office suite. I can actually co-author on Word documents, PowerPoint presentations. So if there's several of us that are working on this document at the same time, we can actually open it in our individual Word applications, work with it concurrently. It'll block out at the paragraph level and define who's working on what section through there. So it's a great spot to collaborate from a document-centric point of view, but it's not as strong from a um, sort of an informal communication perspective. There is a news feed in the team site, and this is actually harking back to the pre-Yammer acquisition days. So when SharePoint 2013 was built, which became um, Office 365, there was social features built into SharePoint itself. And this news feed allows me to, to post and keep a, a news listing going a about the project on the project site. It's only visible within the, the project site itself. It's not visible to external people. It's not connected into my email. So it's somewhat isolated through there. We could replace that. We could actually take that out and drop a, a Yammer web part in there and embed the Yammer feed in and use that from an enterprise social point of view. But I'm gonna talk in a minute about 365 groups and how that's actually a better way to, to manage that and do that. So this was sort of where we began with. Now we can we can extend this, we can add additional lists and libraries in there. I can do what's called add an app. So let's say I wanna add a task list to, to manage the tasks related to the projects. I can go ahead and do that. And I can now then manage my tasks here. I can see an actual Gantt chart view of that. I could drop that task view onto the home page of my project site if I wanted to. And I actually can save that site as a template, which is exactly what we've done um, later on. We're going to show you how we merge ideas together through here. So let's switch gears here for a minute, though. Come back to the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. So we talked about the document library, the news feed, the OneNote. There is a wiki library there as well. So you can create um, wiki pages, which are basically quick and dirty HTML pages, capture ideas, notes, and thoughts from that point of view as well. And as I mentioned, we can add additional lists and libraries through there. But it's still very SharePoint-centric. Now, different approach we've taken on a number of projects is actually to simplify that, to say, well, we don't actually need a project site for each of the projects. What if we just had a document set around that? And the idea around a document set, if you're not familiar with them, it's basically a folder with metadata. So if you think about in your file share days, you had folders you dropped files into, but there's no way to tag those files or to provide any sort of categorization other than the name of the folder itself. Uh, but if we look at something like our Envision IT, internet itself, 
and this webinar that we're doing here, uh, we actually manage that down through our Extranet User Manager site. So I'm in our um, Extranet User Manager intranet right now, and we've got an events library that we've set up in here. Basically what we do is we create a document set for each event that we're doing. So we have today's um, webinar that we're running. We've created a document center around that, and I can click into that. And we can see that we've got metadata around the set itself. So when is the webinar starting and ending? What is the type of the event? It is a webinar. Maybe it was an in-person event. And we've got some links here uh, to the event web page as well as to the GoToWebinar link that we need to actually launch the online meeting. So I can go ahead and click on those links and actually jump over into to other sites. In this case, I'm jumping into our public facing site to say, okay, well, here's our invitation for the event that we're running. So it becomes a nice spot. It's almost like a, a mini project site. We've still got a document library here. We can still extend this and add metadata to it. We don't have additional lists and such through there. We really just have the metadata on the, the set itself and on the files themselves. But if you've got fairly simple, small projects that you're running, like running a webinar, it's an ideal way to do that. Now, if we look at where Microsoft's been going more recently, they introduced in the last, uh, I guess, about eight, nine months or so, a concept called Office 365 Groups. And this was, was really an attempt to combine together features from both Exchange and documents from SharePoint and pull them together into one place called an Office 365 Group. So the idea is when I create a 365 Group, I get a, a, a mailbox for that group, I get a calendar for that group, and I can collaborate just like anybody else through Outlook, uh, through email. I can include people external to the project, even external to the organization on those conversations, and that can all get tracked back into the group itself. So those conversations uh, really become email threads within that mailbox. We talked before about Yammer and, and how does Yammer compare and contrast with Office 365 groups. I mean, Yammer have a very powerful conversations idea as well. Um, I actually prefer the, the Office 365 groups idea from a project management point of view, just allowing that capture of email because there's typically so much email conversation that happens around projects. Now, I'm nothing saying you couldn't use both of them. You could have a Yammer feed as well as an Office 365 group. In fact, that's part of Microsoft's roadmap is to start to pull those together and bring those together. Now, from a calendar point of view, these are true exchange calendars, so I can invite them to meetings right through Outlook. So it becomes very easy uh, to, to maintain the list of calendar events from a project point of view. Rather than having a separate calendar list in SharePoint that I have to maintain, I simply add the project to any of the meetings that are being booked, and that gets recorded in the project itself. Now, documents, though, they're fairly stripped down, even more so than what we saw in document sets. So the only ability we have in the documents that come as part of Office 65 groups is the ability to, to have a version history there. I can go back in time and see prior versions, but I can't do any metadata on that. I can't do any approvals, records, anything like that. And there's no ability for me to create additional SharePoint lists. So I lose some of the, the value of the full SharePoint team site by going to 365 groups, but I gain the email and the calendar side. So let's actually walk through what that looks like. So I come back to my team site here. Uh, where you initiate groups is actually through mail in your Outlook web access. You need to be using it in the browser, not in the Outlook client. Uh, these are fairly new features. So they haven't showed up in the rich Outlook client just yet. And you see I've got a couple of groups defined there already. But let's go ahead and create a new Office 365 group. So I give it a group name. and an ID. I can add some description around that. I can define who sees the group. Is it public that anybody can see it? Anybody meaning anybody within my Office 365? Or is it private where people need to be approved to be able to come into that group? What languages is it? And uh, do I actually subscribe new members so they actually get emails anytime things show up in the group itself? Uh, people get a lot of emails. It's, it's nice to allow them the choice to say, you know what, you can choose to subscribe or you can choose just to come to the group itself to go through that. So let's go ahead and create that group. So what it's doing now is it's creating the mailbox for the group. It's 
creating the calendar and it's creating a, a hidden site collection in SharePoint to store the documents. It's a fairly restricted one, um, so it doesn't allow any sort of extension to that. You can't directly access it. Let's go ahead and add myself as a member to the group. And there we go. We've now got our demo group set up in there. <clears throat> so the default view when I come in through my email coming into the group is the conversation. And it actually has a, a welcome um, conversation through there, but I can actually start my own group conversation as well. So I can define who I want that to go to. I can say I want it to go to my tenant account. Or I can actually make it go to my Envision IT, which is not part of this Office 365 tenant. So I can include external people as part of that. Let's just go ahead and test that and say send. Now I'm seeing that through the web client. Once the group is set up though, I can use my full Outlook client to interact with that. So if I come back over to my Outlook for a second, So this is my regular full Outlook and we can see the message that came through from there. And you can see that the, the demo group that I created actually has an email address associated with it. So anybody can send email to that as long as the group has been set up to accept external email. That's actually something we need to do in the group settings. So let's actually jump into there for a second. So we can see up here, we've got more actions. I can go into edit the group and I can say, let's go ahead and let people from outside the organization email the group. And I'll save that. So now if I come back to my Outlook and I say reply all onto this, so I'm actually replying back to that demo group that we've just created that has its own email alias. And in a second, we'll see that show up in the conversation here. So just by CCing the Office 65 group on all the conversations that are happening back and forth around your project, you can actually keep a chronology of all those conversations. One of the key benefits to that is that it's there for all time, regardless of when people join or leave the, the project. If it was simply in people's inboxes and you had new team members coming on, they lose the visibility of all those prior conversations that happen before they join the group. By, by putting it into an Office 65 group, having that content live in through there, becomes a much more powerful way of keeping that history through there, which is all searchable as well in terms of a, a corporate repository of that knowledge. So let's have a look at some of the other things that are in here. <coughs> so we've got the ability to subscribe, but I've already done that. And we can actually come over and see the calendar view to that group. So I can overlay the calendar with my own personal calendar. I can create appointments either in the group itself and invite in external people, or I can work it the other way. I can actually invite the group from an external appointment point of view and have it show up in the group's calendar through there. Uh, we can also see files through here. So this is the file repository that I was showing you before. So same idea, I can drag and drop files into here, but I don't have the ability to, to extend this, add any sort of metadata or any richer structure to that um, site. So it is somewhat restrictive in terms of what it can do there. But if it's a quick um, project, similar to what we were doing with the document sets, where we just need to fire up something, be able to collaborate on some files together, share that with a number of people and, and go from there, it's a good option from that point of view. What are some of the other things that we've got down in through here? Whoops. We can look at the members, so who's been joined into there. We do have a OneNote, so just like we had with the um, the team sites in Office 365, we have the ability to, to create a OneNote within the 365 group. Um, so very similar functionality from that point of view. Now, one of the things you'll notice in 365 up in the top left corner here, we call it the waffle, it's the app launcher. It basically lets you navigate between the various different Office 365 applications. If I pull that out 
we can see all the different tools that we were talking about in terms of the the exchange features, uh, the OneDrive, the SharePoint, uh, Delve, Videos, Sway are all managed through this app launcher. You can actually extend the app launcher and add your own apps in there as well. It's actually quite simple to do that through the admin console. So what I've done is I've actually added our project site right into the app launcher here to make it very easy to get back to the, the beginning of the site and work out from there. I can jump back out into other spots from there and go ahead from that. <coughs> so let's actually come back to PowerPoint now <coughs> and talk more about what our wish list is. So we, we saw team sites, you know, what was sort of the, the out of the box SharePoint 2013 <coughs> version there the document sets for very simple approaches, the Office 65 groups that started to bring in the exchange features, which I really like, um, but how do we go beyond that? How do we build a full project management site in Office 365 that still brings in that exchange feature? We want to have the email and calendar support there. The OneNote I love, it's great for ad hoc note taking, but we want to have full SharePoint document libraries. We want to create custom lists for things like tasks and issues, risks, decisions. You want to create other SharePoint lists for, for tracking things like the higher level overview of the clients and the projects that are being managed through here. Maybe I even want to bring in external systems, my financial system, time tracking, bug tracking, you know, what have you, into the project site itself. So how do I surface all that up? Oh, I can't do that through Office 65 groups, but I want to leverage that exchange integration piece to that. So what we've done is we've actually pulled that together. We said, well, let's leverage both 365 groups and SharePoint and bring it together into one experience. If I come back to my projects demo site here, uh, what I have at the top level of this site is I've created a number of um, SharePoint lists. So we've got one for clients and one for projects, and really this is a spot to track all the clients and all the projects that we've got set up in this site. Each project that we create um, belongs to a client, so a client can have one or more projects, and each has their own site related to that. So let's actually dive down into one of the project sites, and we'll do a walkthrough of some of the features that we have in there. <coughs> Now I'm going to dial the uh, the zoom back down a little bit here, just so we can see at a high level the various different features in there. So much like we had in the team site, we have a document library, um, but we've actually extended it with metadata. So we've added in a document type and a document status onto these documents here. So rather than having folders for uh, communications versus report versus requirements and using file names to define what's been approved and what's waiting for approval and what's draft, we can actually leverage the metadata to do that. It becomes a very powerful concept. We can actually create what are called content types within here as well, so that when I say I want a new document, I actually have a boilerplate set of documents to choose from here. Are we creating a functional specification, a presentation in PowerPoint, a project document, and you actually define the, the template of that document behind the scenes as part of that. So we have the full, rich um, SharePoint document management capabilities as part of that. We also have the ability to create additional lists in SharePoint. So we've created a number of custom lists here. We've got a to-do list. Uh, so this lets tr us track to-dos related to the project. You know, what are the tasks? When do they do? Who are they assigned to? So we can quickly see where are we tracking from that point of view. We can render that up on a, uh, a, a Gantt chart view through here as well. We can also have issues. If there's outstanding issues that need to be addressed, uh, again, who are they assigned to? What's the status and priority around that? You know, as a project manager, I need to always be looking at my issue list, the prioritization of that, making sure that people are working on the right things. So coming back to the original thought of communications, you know, it's, it's key to make sure that people have one place to go, that they understand all of the information related to the project. I've got all my documentation related to the project. I can see what I, individually individually and working on through here. And we can create custom views on here to say, well, I want to see a view of tasks that are just assigned to me or issues that are assigned to me only. So we can start to personalize the site as well and become a very tailored to the person that's coming in through that particular visit. Um, additional lists that we've created around risks and decisions. <coughs> So risk management, obviously a big part of project management as well. Identifying your risks, uh, your potential project impact, the probability, um, how are we going to mitigate that and, and work to avoid that. 
uh, decisions that we made on the project. You know, often we'll have a, a meeting, decision will be made next week next meeting comes along, what did we decide? Where are we going on that particular topic? Well, let's keep a chronology of all those decisions through there. And we have meeting minutes that we can keep the details of that. We want to surface uh, specific decisions up higher within the project. We can keep them in that list there. And these custom lists are very easy to define and customize through that. So if I drill into something like the to-do list, you know, just like we saw on the document library when we were back in the team site, I can go into my list settings and I can define all of the columns that I want to track on my to-dos. I can add new columns in, either from site columns that already exist, or I can actually create my own columns. This becomes very powerful. I can define, okay, I want to capture some text, or I've got a, a list of choices that I want to work against. It's a number, it's a date, it's looking up into some other list. So you can start to build very uh, sophisticated solutions through the, the creation of columns and the custom list through there. So let's come back to the main project site for a minute now. <clears throat> so we've been very SharePoint focused on what we're talking about so far. How do we bring the Office 65 groups concept into that? Well, what we do is when we create one of these project sites, and we've saved this as a template to make it easy to create the site, we also create an Office 365 group to go with that. We're going to name it the exact same thing, so it's easy to, to correlate between those two. Sorry, grabbing some water. <clears throat> but we actually want to go further than that. We want to surface up information from those Office 365 groups right in the project site. So I don't need to jump into different places. You know, that, that mantra of single version of the truth, single place to go to, is so key and so important to the success of this. So it's, it's still mocked up right now. We haven't fully built it out. But the idea is that on the SharePoint pages, we can actually customize them. We can put our own HTML code in them to say, well, let's actually surface the calendar and the conversations from the Office 65 group right in the project site. And let's provide hyperlinks so it's easy for me to click on you know, that project meeting that we had yesterday from 10 to 11. Well, who went to that? What were the details around that? So I can actually jump right into the Office 65 group now, bring up the details of the project meeting, see who was involved in it, uh, see the agenda from there, away we go from that. So it's very easy to provide that integration back and forth between the Office 65 group and the SharePoint site. We do the same thing from a conversations point of view. So all those emails that are getting tracked against the project, we can actually show them right in the project site here. So we can see here's a test conversation. I can click on that. I'm over into now the Office 65 group email and I can see the threaded conversation back and forth through there actually do a reply all, continue the conversation right from here. So I've seamlessly gone from the project site in SharePoint over into the Office 65 group on the, uh, the group side. So we still have that benefit of doing all of that through Outlook, through Exchange. You know, I can interact with these calendar meetings and email conversations on my mobile device. It's very straightforward from that point of view, but I surface it up right through the project site itself. <coughs> We can even do some very interesting integrations back and forth between uh, the SharePoint document libraries and the items that are in, say, the calendar. So let's say we want to keep meeting minutes on project meetings. When I open that up, um, you saw the attendees in the meeting and the agenda points from there. We can actually tie that over into a Word document that tracks those uh, meeting notes. So I've actually launched into Word Online. So I don't even need Word on my desktop system here. And I can see the agenda details from that. What we can do is we can actually programmatically create this Word document based on the meeting. So think about the evolution. We're, we're going to start a meeting. We're planning on doing it tomorrow or next week or something like that. <coughs> we create it through our Outlook. We invite the appropriate people into it. Hopefully we provide an agenda so people know why they're coming to that meeting and we save that. And it gets interacted in through Exchange and through Outlook. The meeting happens, it's time to start taking meeting minutes and notes from there. What we want to be able to do is provide a link right off of here that says, okay, let's just go ahead and create those meeting minutes and it'll actually read the calendar item. Who was there? What was the agenda? What was the date and time for that? And create this Word document on the fly with all of that filled out for you. All you need to do then is start filling out your notes from the actual meeting, defining your action items, which may tie back into uh, to-dos within the site itself. So you can see how it all starts to interact and tie together from that point of view. 
Now this is all fine and dandy, but how do I get this all set up and running? You know, there's a number of steps that need to happen to build this site out, and, and some of them are fairly technical, uh, some of them you can do manually just by going through the user interface. So I need to create uh, the, the site from the site template, I need to create the Office 65 group, and I need to tie the two of them together so that this um, representation of the group information shows up in the project site. But I also want it to look good. I want some branding applied to it. We can see we've got a custom navigation here. It actually lets us seamlessly jump between our corporate intranet and our project sites. Even though those are in different environments, we've got multiple 365 environments on premises. We can actually blend all that together and provide a single unified user experience for the user. So we need to apply the themes and the branding to that as well. That can become a lot of work for people to do setting up a project. So we want to make that very simple. What we do is we actually create a, um, a, a SharePoint list for the request of new project sites. And then we drive workflows around that uh, to, to actually build that out. So let me take you back to the PowerPoint here for a second. So we don't want to go through that manual set of steps. Uh, we want to actually automate that process. Now, being developers and, and a technology organization, PowerShell is, is our go-to. That's a great way to automate those things. But we want to make it easier for the end users, the business, to actually initiate that process. We need some sort of form around that, and some sort of workflow for that. So what we did was we actually built a request form from a custom list. So we've got fields for the client and the project, um, and we set up content approval on that so somebody can fill out that form once it's approved, we can then continue the processing and actually create that project site. So let's have a look at what that looks like. If I come back in here and I go to my site contents, I've actually got two versions of the list that I want to show you. So the first one, we'll just call pending projects out of the box. And this is literally an out of the box list. So we've created custom fields for the name of the project, its approval status, who the project manager is, client information and project information. So if I wanna request a new project, I simply click new item here and I've got an out of the box SharePoint form that comes up that I fill in certain information. I need to, to enter a name for that set its status as pending approval. And this is where things break down a little bit. I don't actually want the end users doing that. I don't want them to mark it as approved because it's not approved yet and going through that process. So it's okay, well, how do we pretty up this form and make it a little more user friendly from an end user's point of view? Well, what we did was we leveraged uh, Nintex forms. So Nintex is a, a fantastic product, both from a forms and a workflow point of view, whether you're on-premise or in Office 365. So you can install it on, on your servers if you're an on-premise SharePoint. Or you can simply subscribe and add it as an app um, in the cloud for Office 365. Actually, you can add it as an app for an on-premise point of view as well. And what it is is, is a very quick and easy way to build your forms, to design them, to, to specify what fields you want to have on there, what business rules you want to have around that, and then make it very easy to access those forms anywhere. You can actually create different views of those forms, whether somebody's coming in from a mobile device or a desktop, and then you can tie it into the workflow, which is part of the Nintex suite as well. So let's have a look at the form first. I'll come to the pending projects list here. Very similar list that we saw before, except if we look at the list settings, we've actually got a Nintex form defined for that. So right in the browser, you know, as a power user, I can actually design these forms, lay out the controls that I want to have on there, even define different layouts to say, well, I want to add another layout from a, a smartphone point of view and modify and tweak that from there. So we can see here, you know, much friendlier form, we've actually hidden a number of the fields <coughs> that we need under the hood for the process to work. We don't actually want the end users uh, to be interacting with. So let's actually come back and go right up to the, the top level of the site. And what we've done is on the main site, we've actually put a link to request a new client or project site. And what that does is it actually just triggers off that Nintex form and starts that process. So we can ask for a webinar demo project site, give it a URL. Who's the project manager? I'll put myself in there. 
um, is there an existing client? So it looks up in that client list that we have, or we wanna actually enter in a, a net new client. In this case, I'm gonna pick an existing client, so I don't need to fill in the rest of the client information. I just need to provide some description for the, the project. And I go ahead and save that. What it's doing is it's submitting that into that pending projects list. So we can actually see, well, there's a new list entry there that's been created for the webinar demo. Now, what we've done on this particular list is we've set up content approval. So I, as a general user requesting a new project, I can enter my request, but I can't actually approve it. I need somebody who's part of the approvers group to say, yes, that's a legitimate project. Or you know, maybe unbeknownst to me, somebody else has already set up the same project under a different site, and they should just let me know that, no, we're not going to create a new project site for you. We're going to direct you to the one that's existing there. So what we need to do is actually go through uh, the workflow process. So it takes a minute for emails to come through, but I as an approver will, will receive an email saying, hey, Peter Carson just requested a new project site for his webinar demo. Please review that and approve as appropriate. What I can do to short circuit getting that email, or actually no, it just showed up for me here. Here we go. So we can see here is a request to set up the, the webinar demo project site, and it's asking me to please approve that project request. So I'll go ahead and click on the link. It takes me into the workflow task. Whoops, that didn't work properly off of there. Let me just jump in here for a second. Oh, I need to edit the item, sorry, that's why. So I can see the details of the task assigned to me as part of the approvers group, and I can either approve or reject that request. So let me go ahead and approve that request. And what's gonna happen now is we have an in-text workflow running behind the scene that's, that's looking for that approval to happen, and then it takes a number of actions from there. So let's actually go back up to the, the top level site There we go. And ultimately, the workflow takes a little while to run. But what it's going to do is it's going to create a new entry in the clients list if it's a new client that's getting created. And it's going to create an entry in the projects list for that project site that's being created. Now, the piece that we haven't wired into the Nintex workflow just yet. So if I come over into, uh, let me see here. I say contents again for a second and back into that pending projects list. If I look at my Nintex workflow for that, I'll actually see the details of the steps that are happening under the hood right now through there. So again, a very simple interface for creating your workflows right through the, um, the browser itself. So I can see my my workflow. Oh, sorry, my browser just stopped responding. What I want to do is just actually open that workflow up and give you a visual view of what that looks like. So it's going to take us through a number of steps of sending an email to, to say that has been approved or it's been rejected. And it's going to then set up the uh, the client entries and the project entries for that uh, particular project that's just been requested. At the end, the, the action we don't have wired in there just yet, it's going to call out to a PowerShell program. And basically what this does, without getting into the technical bits, is it goes through and it actually creates the um, Office 65 group. Let me just go ahead and run that as well as the team site with the customized template on that, provisions all that up for me, so it's all set up and, and ready to go from there. So as an end user, I requested a form, it went to an approval step. Once it was approved, called to this script here, actually creates the SharePoint site, creates the Office 65 group, wires it all together, deploys the branding, does a number of things from there to get it all working properly for me, and I'm good to go. At the end of that, it would send the email to the person that originally requested it saying, here's your new project site, you're all set up and ready to go. So we're getting a little tight on time here. I'm actually running a little bit over. Let me just come back to uh, the presentation deck for a second. So there's an example of the, uh, the workflow and what it's doing through there. 
So let's just look at the, the wrap up side of things. So while that's running over on the um, the SharePoint side, creating the, the team site and the Office 65 group. Really what we wanted to do was leverage the best of both SharePoint Online and Exchange. So we've got the mail on the calendar in Exchange, but we still have a full featured SharePoint site in SharePoint Online. We can create project portals that are very unique. So whatever your particular requirements are, we can define the lists and libraries and the metadata as part of that. We call that the information architecture for the site itself. And you can then leverage the full Microsoft productivity stack. So you can use Outlook for your email and calendar. You can do co-authoring in Word and Excel and PowerPoint against the documents that you've got in your SharePoint site. By all means, leverage OneNote. It's actually free. You don't need a license for Office at all to get OneNote. It really rocks. It's awesome. So I would encourage you to check that out. Use Skype for Business from an instant messaging, desktop sharing, voice and video point of view. Uh, Delve and Power BI, we didn't get a chance to dive into, uh, but the knowledge discovery, the, the ability to dis display project analytics, key parts of that as well. Uh, still to come, I mentioned earlier on around the governance uh, side of things. We really want to understand how we define the roles and responsibilities. What can different people do within that project site? And you can actually hide portions of that through permissions, through audience targeting to say, well, certain people only see certain parts of the project site. If you think about, well, we want to collaborate externally with our clients, we don't necessarily want to show everything about the project to our clients. We want to only share what's appropriate through there. We can do that external collaboration through that. Now, external users can't be a member of Office 65 groups. You need a different way to manage those external users and to onboard those staff. And that's really where our second webinar comes in. It's going to talk more about our product, the Extranet User Manager, which is all about that dele delegation of user management out to the business and that onboarding process of how you bring people on through there. So that's going to be happening next Wednesday, September 16th, same time, 1.30 to 2.30. Uh, we're going to do a, a quick review of the project site that we just went through there, um, the site creation workflow process. And we're actually going to extend that so it'll actually create the project groups, allow you to invite the external people in, do the self-registration, single sign-on, all of that through there. So uh, by all means, if you found this interesting, useful, you want to go further in terms of how do I bring people in from outside of my organization, check out our session next week on that from an external collaboration point of view. Didn't really get a uh, chance for many questions through there. Apologize on that. We're right at the 2.30 mark there. Um, happy to stay on, Amanda or Eric, if there's specific ones that we want to answer. Um, we can certainly follow up with emails back out afterwards to answer particular questions from there as well. So before I lose everybody off of there, I um, want to thank everybody for joining us this afternoon, and hopefully we'll see you next week as well. If there are people in your organization you think value uh, the information that we've gone through this afternoon, like I mentioned, we're going to be putting the deck up um, after the session. We should have the video recording up and available um, hopefully by tomorrow so people can on demand pull that down as well. Thanks very much, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Bye now.